today um, I'm gonna talk about the serial killer who inspired movies like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre among others uh, while I do my makeup so um, he was born in August 27 of 1906 uh, in La Crosse, Wisconsin he was also called the Butcher of Plainfield uh, I'm gonna explain why <laughs> though um, he and his brother Henry were mainly raised by their mother Augusta uh, their mother Augusta raised them to believe that the world was full of evil and that women were vessels of sin um, so to protect them she moved the family to an isolated farmhouse in Plainfield hence the butcher of Plainfield right <laughs> so when they moved to Plainfield uh, Ed and his brother Henry were only kids Ed only really got out of his house to go to school in which he really didn't make any meaningful connections with his classmates because they said he was odd and had unexplained uh, fits of laughter all right so i did not shake my foundation <laughs> it's fine it's okay um and he was also he also had a, a lazy eye and had a speech impediment which did not help the situation right and which is why probably uh, he was uh, very close to his mother too um even when his brother henry confronted confronted her about things uh ed never did which is why it is believed that his first victim may have been his brother henry so in 1944 um Ed and his brother Henry went out to clear some vegetation uh, in their fields by burning it away but apparently the fire got out of control so when the firefighters arrived Ed told them that Henry had vanished soon after they found him face down in the marsh and he had died of asphyxiation uh, although the death was ruled a tragic accident so after Henry's death uh, Ed and his mother Augusta lived in isolation in the farmhouse for a bit for like a year before her death in 1945 after his mother's death uh, Ed transformed the house into some sort of shrine to her memory by keeping everything the way she left it in the same condition she left it so living in isolation it started to uh, do something with his time right so he started uh, learning more about the nazi experiments uh, about human anatomy um, reading horror novels and he, con he was consuming a lot of uh, corn that's what I'm gonna call it <laughs> just exchange the C for P right <laughs> he also started to really sink into his uh, sick fantasies <laughs> I went a little heavy on the concealer mm. um, he didn't really gave in to his fantasies until November 1957 when a local hardware store owner named Bernice Wharton disappeared just leaving behind bloodstains um, and she was last seen at her store and the last client was actually Ed Gein so police went to Ed, Ed's farmhouse to investigate and what they found is what inspired movies like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 
uh, Psycho and Silence of the Lambs, among other, among other horror movies. So they found Bernice Wharton in the kitchen. She was decapitated and hung by her ankles from the rafters. They also found countless bones, skulls impaled on his bedpost, and kitchen utensils made from skulls. He had chairs made from skin, uh, legends made from human leg skin, uh, masks made from faces, a belt made from nips. <laughs> and a corset made from a female torso. Among all that, they also found dismembered body parts like four noses and the genitals of nine different women. They also found the remains of Mary Hogan, a tavern keeper who had gone missing in 1954. It said that he had collected the remains from three local graveyards, which he started visiting two years after his mother died. He said that he started going to graveyards looking for bodies that he thought resembled his mother uh, because he wanted to create a woman's suit so that he could become his mother. and. Uh, roll into her skin so it was arrested but he was found not guilty uh, for reasons of insanity so he was sent to the central state uh, hold on <laughs> central still <blah, blah. laughs> central state hospital for the criminally insane and he was diagnosed with schizophrenia but then, 10 years later, he was deemed fit to stand trial and he was convicted of the murder of Bernice Wharton, the first victim, right, well, the first victim. The thing is, he never got convicted for the murder of Mary Hogan, the girl who had gone missing in 1954, um, because the state thought it was a waste of money like huh so in conclusion I guess we'll never really know how many people he killed because he only admitted to those two Bernice and Mary but the police found as many as 40 bodies in his house so <laughs> I don't know so I hope you liked the video, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to. And if you wanted to, um, please leave suggestions for, I don't know, other serial killers you want me to talk about. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye!